There are a lot of bad movies in the world, but the most entertaining bad movie of them all is a little 1987 film called Miami Connection. It has all the bad acting and writing that you find in the more famous bad movies like Troll 2 or The Room, but it's even better than they are and the reason is very simple. It's more fun. This is why people enjoy watching bad movies in the first place. Miami Connection is the most fun bad movie there is. None of the others are able to offer everything that a stereotypically bad movie needs and do it in such a fun and charming way. Most So Bad They're Good movies have incomprehensible plots, and Miami Connection is no exception. It tells the story of a group of orphan college kids who moonlight as a taekwondo rock band called Dragon Sound. When one of them starts dating the sister of a drug dealer, the dealer's gang and his motorcycle ninja friends decide to take them out. Yes, you heard that right, this movie has motorcycle ninjas. Apparently, they also need to eliminate Dragon Sound in order to secure their drug dealing operation. It's never really explained why, the band didn't have anything to do with drugs before that, but whatever, just go with it. There's also a rival Taekwondo band that joins up with the gang when they lose their jobs. If you get my job back for me, any money I make is yours. What's the point of working if you have to give all your money to someone else? Whatever. All you need to know is that there's good guys fighting bad guys, and some of those bad guys are ninjas that ride around on motorcycles. The plot obviously doesn't make any sense, it never does in these kinds of movies, but what makes Miami Connection different is that the concept is so ill-conceived that it couldn't work. Even in the hands of a master filmmaker, this story would make you laugh. Contrast that with something like The Room. The story of a man whose life comes crashing down around him when his fiancée is unfaithful doesn't have to be a bad movie. Nor does the story of a family that takes a vacation in a small town secretly controlled by goblins. Those movies could have worked, and what makes them funny is their poor execution. The concept behind Miami Connection is so silly that it would still be funny even if it were made by smart people. The only bad movie with a more ill-conceived plot is probably Ed Wood's Plan 9 from Outer Space, but even that a tale of grave-robbing aliens could work if it had been made by somebody who actually knew what they were doing. You see? You see? Your stupid minds! Stupid! Stupid! That's all I'm taking from you. Get back here! Not even Fritz Lang or Steven Spielberg can make you take motorcycle ninjas seriously. Most bad movies are made with hilariously low budgets, which means they mostly take place indoors and in fake cardboard sets that don't have proper lighting. It makes everything feel drab and claustrophobic, like a pale guy with a neck beard who has a bedsheet over his bedroom window. Don't get me wrong, The Room is a fun movie to watch, but it doesn't look fun. Miami Connection, on the other hand, is shot mostly outdoors, where it's hot and sunny with all the flashy neon and bright colors of 1980s Florida. We get scenes shot at the beach and in cities, almost like a real movie. And they're not just quick, establishing shots that cut to a painfully fake set with stairs that wobble when you walk up them. All the locations in Miami Connection look like real places because they are. You have actual ninjas riding around on actual motorcycles through actual city streets. The film also makes a point of giving everyone something nice to look at, whether you're straight, gay, into fat guys, have a torture fetish, or even if you're a pedophile. Everyone has something nice to look at, and that's without resorting to long, creepy sex scenes that were clearly made just so the director could be in a room with a naked young actress for a few hours. Remember, I'm not saying this movie looks good, I'm saying it looks fun. The music also creates a sense of fun in Miami Connection. The songs are terrible, but at least they're catchy and kitschy. You can actually feel yourself getting more stupider as you listen to them, but at least you can listen to them. See, I dare you not to tap your feet to that. Ain't nobody ever gonna sit and listen to You Are My Rose or that song from Howard the Duck. It's not an accident that one of the songs from Miami Connection was actually used in the video game Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon, because it's awesome, and that's not a matter of opinion, it's just a fact. The most fascinating aspect of these bad movies is always how they got made in the first place. It's baffling to learn how everything could come together so horribly wrong. Usually, these films are made by one individual with complete creative control and no prior background in filmmaking. <laughs> what a story, Mark. Yeah, you can say that again. Miami Connection was made by a man named Y.K. Kim. Born in Korea, Kim immigrated to the United States where he opened up a successful chain of Taekwondo schools across Florida. He became a well-known pillar of the community, and then one day he decided to use his fortune and connections, get it, to make his own movie. Even though he didn't make a good one, this is still an uplifting story. All the actors were students at his schools, that's why every character in the film magically knows martial arts. 
This is except, of course, for that one guy who actually knows how to play a guitar, and this guy who we never see doing any cool moves. I guess he was hired for his acting chops. My mother was Korean, and my father was black American. Everyone wanted to help YK Kim make his movie. He got permits to close down streets because everyone loved him. The police in the film are real police because they were his friends. Aww. Hey, wait a minute. If those are real cops, why are they pointing their guns at each other? Certain things you hear about the backstory behind other bad movies makes you feel a little dirty. It's always some control freak who spent all his own money hiring strangers to make a vanity project. I guess you could accuse YK Kim of doing the same thing, but at least all the people who worked on his film still love him. He seems like a genuinely cool dude, so you can watch him for two hours and not feel like you need to take a shower. Best of all, he never feels the need to show you his ass. This is the most important aspect of Miami Connection. You can't help but feel happy after you've seen it. Its themes of friendship and loyalty and sticking together through thick and thin are almost enough to melt my cold, cynical heart. A multicultural group of people come together to overcome adversity and make the world a better place. Sure, there's a big blood orgy at the end that's hilariously out of place, but the good news is that it all works out. The good guys win and the bad guys lose. Isn't the world a wonderful place? Miami Connection doesn't end with an out-of-focus shot of a dead man lying in a puddle of his own blood. The room is all about how you can't really trust anyone, not your future wife, not your best friend, hell, even Denny is taking drugs. WHAT THE HELL IS WRONG WITH YOU?! Most bad movies make you feel bad, while Miami Connection makes you feel good. All the shitty acting and bad editing and everything else that makes it a bad movie is just icing on the cake. It's enjoyable even if you ignore all that. And hey, even if you hate bad movies, I think we can all agree that the world could always use more motorcycle ninjas. Friends through eternity.